Captain Matt, voter secret weapon, and today we're talking about coastal voting mistakes. Hey, listen, we all know the coastal environments, it's harsher, it's less forgiving, it's more challenging than voting in most fresh water areas outside maybe some rivers. So let's look at the mistakes. The number one, running aground. As the sheriff, you don't want that to be you. This guy got a lot of hell when he got back. But you've got to watch out for the depths with the changing tides. Uh, running aground is, is all too easy to do. Next is not paying attention to the tides, not knowing that in this spot, you may be perfectly deep enough to hang out at the sandbar to relax. But two hours later, you could be high and dry. And then you just got to wait. There's not much you can do not paying attention at night. Listen, when you're running at night, you've got to keep your speed down because it's hard to see. Keep all the lights off in your boat as much, keep it as, as dark as you can inside your boat. Make sure you have your anchor and navigation light on and use a spotlight to find those navigation markers. Most of them should be marked pretty well. And uh, sometimes you can run a spotlight to make sure you see exactly where they are, stay in the middle of that channel and avoid uh, that disaster. Next, jetties. This one, listen, you should see this jetty in most situations. I'm guessing this happened at night and um, it, it, uh, it showed up like this in the morning, maybe some fog. But a lot of times the jetty can be submerged at high tide. It can be a two-tier jetty where the second section is actually at high tide. That jetty is impossible to see. What do you do? You try to cut that corner a little too tight. You run aground. You damage your prop. You damage your boat. Uh, you have you get hung up altogether. Avoid it. Putting your plug in or forgetting to put your plug in. That that's for any boater. But in the coastal environment, it's can be more challenging at the boat ramp. Fewer access points. A lot of hurrying up. More challenging situations with moss and algae and growth on the on the ramps. You got current. Maybe you get a little distracted. You forget the plug, and next thing you know. Your boating day is gone south. <laughs> we talked about the algae on the boat ramp. Hey, you have got to be very aware that your rig is set up in four-wheel drive. If you have four-wheel drive in low, put that parking brake on, put it in park. And if you need to, maybe even chalk the wheels or get those mats that you can put down for traction. If you're going to put your boat in at low tides, especially, watch out for slick ramps. A lot of times it can be just the conditions aren't favorable to get your boat out and sometimes it's just neglect and not putting the not putting the transmission in park not setting the emergency brake not chalking the wheels and here you are that is not a story you want to uh your friends to know about end up all over the internet coastal environments stuff in your bow going through a tough inlet you have to know how to run your boat in rough chop Keep that bow up. Keep the weight in the back of the boat. Keep your speed at an appropriate level for the conditions. Not too slow, not too fast, and feather that throttle on and off the throttle as needed so that you can avoid stuffing that bow, getting the boat swamped, potentially getting in an unsafe situation, getting everybody on the boat wet. And I've even seen it damage boats uh, if the conditions are bad enough. And not only do you not want to stuff the bow, you also don't want to, as Captain Tim calls it, that helped me with the confident coastal boater, the Thelma and Louise, where you're going over the, you're going over the inlet waves and you're on that throttle a little too much. And what happens? You fly off that ramp and you slam down. You've seen it on the haul over inlet, the boat fails video, people breaking their tailbones, um, really, really getting hurt because you're going too much on the throttle and not pulling it back at the appropriate time. I, I use the term feathering the throttle on and off the throttle at the appropriate times. Weather, listen, weather can pick up in a hurry, especially down in Florida. You get a, a little squall that pops up. You got wind and rain and maybe lightning. You got to know what to do and you've got to be able to prepare for it in advance, trying to avoid it if you can, knowing what to do if you get caught in it. Having the apps that we, we share with you in the Confident Coastal Boater Fish Weather is a great app that uh, we recommend there as well as others, but pay attention to the weather on the coast. It comes up quick. Have your VHF radio monitoring 16, but also hit that WX channel and listen to the, to the local weather in your area. Watch the radar if you have it and um, plan, not just, hey, can we go out, but what's the weather going to be like two, three, four, five, six, eight hours from now as well. Talked about the Confident Coastal Boater, the best boat captain program. We've got it for outboards, sting boards, pontoons, as well as twin engine. But corrosion, that salt, it's just rough on everything. So you've got to spray everything down with fresh water, rinse it out. This is actually a, um, a mounting bracket on a Yamaha that just, guess what? When you need to repower this, it is going to be a nightmare to take off. And if you don't deal with it, 
your motor is going to be sitting at the bottom of the drink and there is nothing you can do about it. And this happens everywhere on your boat, your wiring connections, any metal, anything at all on your boat needs to be rinsed down, taken care of because of that salt water and treated. Then you got barnacles and other growth that happens. There are some products out there that can help avoid this. Um, and uh, I've talked with a couple. I haven't, I haven't uh, had a chance to promote them yet. I've got to test them a little bit more. But if you leave your boat in the water, make sure that you're prepared for the growth. Make sure you're hauling it, scraping the barnacles, putting on the proper bottom paints, having the correct anodes or zincs or, or the proper material based on saltwater, brackish water and make sure that you're paying attention to it because it doesn't take long in some warmer climates for uh, things to start growing very, very rapidly. <laughs> this is a classic. Happens mainly in coastal boating because of all the rod holders. If somebody's not paying attention, they're new to boating, you ask your buddy to fill up your boat and, oh, that looks like a uh, place to put the gas nozzle. They stick the gas nozzle in, start running it, and guess what? That gas goes all over your, your deck. It goes into the, uh, into the holds. Make sure you're putting fuel in the fuel tank, not the wastewater tank, not the freshwater tank, not a rod holder. It's real easy to not pay attention and to get those mixed up. And it's very, very dangerous if that happens. Don't do it. Pay attention. Not taking care of your trailer. Listen, taking care of your boat's a lot of work. You, you put the boat in, you pull it out, you get the boat all cleaned up. But guess what? That trailer just got dunked in a bunch of salt water, the axle, all of the bracings. If it's a painted trailer, if it's got any any um, way for water to get in, that water's going to get in, that salt's going to sit in there, and it's going to corrode. And it can take as little as two years, maybe even a year, for that trailer to be destroyed. If you got an older trailer, pay attention to it. Make sure that everything's strong. And never, ever, 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 ever use your painted trailer in salt water. That's just a recipe for disaster, like what happened here. Galvanized or aluminum is what you want to look for. If you're new to boating, get the Boater Boot Camp. We've got a coastal version of the boot camp that you can get once you're in there. Totally free, boaterbootcamp.com. Give this a thumbs up. Give us anything that I missed. If you're a coastal boater, give me what I missed. Make your comments. Subscribe to the channel if you found this val valuable. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.